Um, hello, we are here at the NAB22. I'm here with um, Natalie Marsh from uh, Lotus Broadcasting. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, you, your world and um, you know, the future. Um, so just to kind of get to know a little bit about you yourself, you know, tell us a bit about you. What's, what's your day today? Uh, well, my day to day consists of meetings with programming, salespeople, um, engineering. Right now we're in the middle of a studio rebuild, so we're redoing eight studios as well as building a backup studio. Um, so it's, it's fun and crazy. You know, you have client meetings in between there, you're selling, you're not working, so. And what's, and what's, if you're gonna to talk to your colleagues, I mean, what, would, what would they say your specialist expertise is? What, what are you the best in the world at? I think my colleagues will probably say relationships. Um, I've been at Lotus for 23 years. I grew up in Las Vegas, so I've been here for you know, almost 50 years. And so I know a lot of people in town, but I, and I think they're right, but I also think problem solving is probably my main expertise. You're the chief firefighter, right? I am, <laughs> yes. And what did you do before you entered this industry? <laughs> oh, I was a pre-med student. And uh, all of my doctor mentors were sort of explaining how insurance was really changing the industry and that I should start thinking about maybe doing something else. And uh, I sort of fell into a job in hotel sales and it weirdly fulfilled my need to help people. So I moved back home. So I did three years in Seattle and I moved back home to the hotel capital of the world and discovered that hotel sales here is transactional and not relationship-based. So once again, found myself at kind of a crossroads and uh, my radio rep asked me to write a letter about why I buy radio, and I did, and her boss offered me a job and the rest is kind of history. So you, you followed that kind of that spark and that passion, you know, some people believe, you believed in. Yeah, just, you know, to really help people, you know, with. I get every day, I get to solve people's problems in business. And then once I became a manager, then you're kind of solving all the problems in the building, right? Yeah. So, and yeah. I mean, like, when you started out, do you, you believe that you'd be here right now doing, doing this? It sounds like you're running around being interviewed all week. <laughs> I, I didn't. To be honest, I never, I've never taken a job thinking, okay, here's the next thing that I'm going to do. I just wanted to be the best at that job. Um, I've been at Lotus for 23 years. and. Our manager has, you know, he was there for 40 years. And so I never really thought about when he would retire or what that would look like. Um, but three years ago, I took over as, as market manager, so. Amazing. And so you have 23 years. So what's, what's changed for radio or audio within that time? You know, I, a lot of things have changed. You know, little things. Some of, you used to have to say the address and the phone number, you know, multiple times so they would remember it. And then the internet really changed all of that because then you just had to give a website. But also the length of spots, you know, they used to be 60s. Everything was a 60 and now a 60 is like forever. People, if they have a good jingle, they're doing fives, tens, you know, 15s are very prominent. So I think those are two of the, probably the biggest change in the marketing standpoint. So you think, think that um, people's attention spans are, or they're, or they're craving immediacy? What do you our, think? our attention spans have definitely been Twitterized. Um, yeah, for sure. If I hear a 60 on the radio, I'm like, oh my gosh, that was so long. And I don't spend that much time on social media, and yet still, you can tell the difference because TV doesn't have that long of ads anymore. Radio doesn't have. So when you hear one, it's noticeable. Yeah. And yeah. talking about ads, can, can you remember the first radio ads that you that kind of left an impression with you? I think of I think of two. When I was little, I, I think I probably knew that McDonald's jingle pretty well because that that was pretty special when you were a kid. Um, but when I was older, uh, there was a car dealership here that had a pretty rememberable jingle and I and that one stuck out to me. Okay, and, and why do you think that stuck out? This? I think the messaging and the jingle. You know, like I think if, and that hasn't changed. I think if people have a good message and a, and a good jingle, you know, you just remember it. And do you think, you know, that the kind of fundamental advertising structure has changed over the, this 23 years or? Besides, you know, just that tweak about, you know, numbers and, and addresses, I really think it comes down to what is your messaging and what is your offer? Why, why should people come to your business? 
And, and, and where do you think this is, this is going? Where do you think the, um, the, the future might lie in terms of changing that advertising? I, you know, I think there's, there's, more, uh, there's more things that you can do, right? Like, um, when, you're, when you talk about how do, you, how do you track somebody, right? So you're sending them to a website. Now you can, you can tell by their mobile phones if they've been in that business and they heard the ad. You know, there's, there's different weird, you know, kind of big brother creepy things, but good for advertising to be able to say, no, hey, we got this, this many people into your business. It was great. All these people walked into your door. Um, and so was, what, and what role do you think that um, smart speakers or, or voice assistants will play in um, advertising moving forward? Smart speakers have been great for radio. They've really brought back, you know, sort of a resurgence of in-home listening. And I, I mean, I do it myself. And then you, we saw it with everybody else. You know, I have a radio. I'm in the business. I still like the convenience of just asking my smart speaker to play the station um, and in my office. So in my office, I'm usually streaming online, and then in my um, home, I'm usually using a smart speaker. So, and do you think there are, there are opportunities for um, kind of broadcasters to, to to deliver more kind of engagement or interaction using smart speakers? Yeah, I know there's you know certain skills that you can give, and I, I guess we sort of you know we're a small company in a lot of ways, we're a private owner, and so we kind of take this luxury that we get of waiting and letting everybody else sort of figure out some of the mess and then being like, okay, well, this is good. We're going to jump in. We like it. So I think, I think there's a place to engage more. I know you can set up skills and you can give you know, certain messages that engage your listeners. Um, we just, we're kind of waiting for the, the rollout of the improvements on that. Yeah, yeah no, that's, I mean, it's, it's a very good position to be in yeah. to, to, to see where the market's yeah. rolling. Where, where do you think are the biggest opportunities um, for the, the kind of audio industry or the radio industry right now in terms of where to grow? You know, audio is really shown to be so important. And I, I love that because it's one of the things I wrote in that letter that got me into radio was that you can take it with you on the go and it, you can multitask. And even though we've all sort of slowed down a little bit after the pandemic, we're still pretty big multitaskers. Yeah. And so being able to listen to audio, so being available to your listeners however they want that to be. So whether that's you know live, whether that's on demand, you know, with a podcast of the show, we get a we get a lot of listeners, especially on our sports shows that if they, you know, if they miss that show about their favorite sports team, they want to play it back. And I think it's important to keep up with that. And then just sort of the whole picture, you know, if there's, if there's a way to engage them with video and social media, and, and they expect all of those touch points because they're such a part of their daily life. Okay, so kind of more channels to kind of communicate yeah, and engage. Yeah, to engage with them. Um, so I think you know we're we're looking to you know champion the industry. It sounds like you know you are as well. I mean, if you were a you know a, a young graduate, kind of school leaver looking to enter the industry, where where would you recommend they they start right now? I think if you're going to college or university, it's important to see if you have a journalism and media studies in on your campus. Um, see if you have a radio station or TV station, a lot of campuses have those, and, and you should jump in and, and get some hands-on experience there, and then intern, you know, speak with your department heads and reach out to your local radio stations and do an internship with them and, and really understand, you know, what you like about the industry and, and be open-minded because I think a lot of younger kids, you know, that you want to go towards sort of the sexier side, right? You want to be on air, or maybe you want to be the producer, or you want to edit, you know, the, the different things. But there's a lot of things that are behind the scenes, you know, from the sales team to the business manager to the production. There's a lot of things that maybe they don't think about. So you want to be open-minded and, and test all of the fields when you're actually in that working radio station. Awesome, that's, that's great advice. Now, just kind of in summary, if um, anyone who's watching was, is going to kind of get a, get a feel for Lotus, going to tune into a station right now, what, what would give a, a great overview of Lotus? <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I think I told you we have, you know, sports and rock. So my personal favorite, because I'm 
an active rock girl, you know, um, so it'd be comp.com. Okay. But if anybody out there is a Raider fan, you know, Raider Nation Radio or lvsportsnetwork.com will definitely take you to all of our sports offerings. So. Amazing. Well, look, thanks so much. I know you've got a very busy show here, a busy week. Um, I wish you all the best. Thanks very much for spending the Thank time with us today. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Actually, thank nice you. Nice to meet you. Cheers.